Okay, this BBC is about the kindness of others. Now, it's something we need to keep in mind at all times and for all sentient beings. I want to tell you the story of one woman. What she did was extraordinary. What she did after that is even more extraordinary. Her name was André de Jong, Didi. Didi was born in Belgium on November 30th, 1916, during the First World War. And at that time, her country was under occupation by the Germans. One of the heroes from her youth was a woman named Edith Cavell. Now, Edith Cavell was a British nurse, nurse who was executed by the Germans in 1915 for helping troops to escape from occupied Belgium to neutral Netherlands. Didi became a commercial artist and she trained as a nurse. She was inspired to become a nurse by Cavell. Didi Dijon was described as a frail young girl who appeared 20 years old, very pretty, pleasant, kind, cheerful, and simple. Now, she was 23 on May 27, 1940, when she found her father crying. Seen 17 days earlier, the German army had once again entered neutral Belgium on its way to Paris. And on this day, Belgium had been forced to surrender. So now we're in World War II. She was sad, but she was also very angry. And she told her father, you are wrong to cry. You'll see what we do to them. From the very beginning, she was de determined to resist. And just a year after the Belgium occupation, Didi had become one of the top resistance leaders in Europe. A British colonel would call her a pure heroine of legend. She started working as a nurse for British troops wounded in the fighting in Belgium. And she, along with a group of friends and acquaintances, began to smuggle the British troops, British soldiers out of German controlled hospitals and take them to nearby safe houses that she herself had set up. Not long afterwards, she secretly went to, Sp went to Spain, which was a neutral country. Now, this is a journey of 900, over 900 miles during World War II and during the German occupation. She met up there with German officials and told them about the German soldiers and airmen that she was hiding. And she told them that she and several others had set up an escape line from Belgium and France to help these men get back to England. If the British government would give her money to help pay for guides, safe houses, food, and train fares, she could bring these men back to England. But she made it clear that she, she would be in charge of the escape line and it would remain under her control. They verified her story and said, yeah, we'll finance you. This was, thus was born the, what's called the Comet Line. Now, the Comet Line would become the largest and most important escape line for Allied soldiers and airmen from occupied Europe. The Comet Line helped over 800 British and American servicemen escape. Of these 800 servicemen, the Comet Line um, that ex helped escape, 118 were escorted by Didi de Jong herself. Didi knew what she was doing. She was involved in every aspect of the operation. She organized the safe houses and worked with photographers and forgers to produce false Belgian and French identity papers. She was known as the postmistress, but her real identity was kept a closely guarded secret. The servicemen that they escorted over 900 miles, they usually traveled on trains or by bicycles and they always had an escort. The majority of the Comet Line workers who escorted the men were women in their teens and 20s. Now let's understand each other. If they got caught by the Gestapo, they would be, the uh, soldiers or sailors would be sent to POW camps, but the resistance fighters would either be immediately killed, tortured, or sent to a concentration camp. And all the Comet Line had over 3,000 civilian volunteers. Over 700 of them were arrested by the Germans and 290 were ex executed or died in prison. On the 15th of January, 1943, on her 18th trip, Didi was escorting three American pilots, but a, a snowstorm forced them to stop at a safe house at the foot of the Pyrenees. The next day, they were betrayed and arrested by the German soldiers. 
But the current line continued to assist soldiers and airmen to escape until the end of the war, even after Didi's arrest. Didi de Jong was sent first to a prison in Paris and eventually to the Ravensbrück concentration camp. Ravensbrück was a Nazi concentration camp that was specifically designed to house women. Of the 132,000 women and children sent there, more than 70% died of starvation, torture, beating, hanging, shooting, horrific medical experiments, and eventually a gas chamber. Didi was interrogated 19 times by the Abwehr, which is the German army, and twice by the Gestapo. And it, although she admitted to being the leader of the Comet Line to protect her father, the Germans did not believe her. They did not believe that a slight young woman was more than a minor helper in the Comet Line. They underestimated her, and because of their underestimation of Didi's importance to the Comet Line, it probably saved her life. Unfortunately, her father, Frederick Dijon, was arrested in Paris on June 7, 1943, and executed on March 28, 1944. The Gestapo eventually figured out that how important Didi was, but by the time they went back to the Ravensbrück, she was so emaciated that they couldn't tell who she was. They couldn't recognize her at all, so they couldn't identify her, and she eluded them. But she was close to dying by the time Ravensbrück was liberated in the spring of 1945 a very remarkable woman. The British were so impressed by her actions during World War II that several years after the war ended, Didi was working in Ethiopia and her mother was dying. The RAF diverted an aircraft to Ethiopia, picked her up, flew her to Belgium, and after the funeral, they diverted another aircraft, picked her up, and flew her back to Ethiopia. Okay, That's respect. <laughs> For her wartime efforts, she was awarded the United States Medal of Freedom with Golden Palms, the British George Medal, and she became a, a chevalier, a knight, of the French Legion of Honor. She also became a chevalier of the Order of Leopold. She re received the Belgian Croix de Guerre with Palm and was granted the honorary rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the Belgian Army. In 1985, she was made a countess in the Belgian nobility by King Bedouin. So I told you, this is a very extraordinary woman. One of the servicemen who rescued her said of Didi de Jong, she was one of those individuals who felt the misery of the world and would not let it rest. That was what she did during the war. After the war, Didi de Jong finished her nursing studies and went to Africa and worked in leper colonies first in the Belgian Congo, then in Cameroon, then in Ethiopia, and finally in Senegal. In 1959, while working at a leper colony in the Congo, she was asked why she had come to the Congo. She replied, because from the age of 15, I wanted to cure lepers. If I had delayed any longer, I would have been too late. The Countess de Jong died on October 13, 2007, at age 90 in Brussels. Now, I told you that this BBC was about the kindness of others. Didi Dijon's kindness and courage were on full display during her entire life. But what we have to remember is that every sentient being, at some time since beginningless time, has performed unselfish acts of courage and kindness, just like Didi Dijon did in this life. No matter what idiotic or unkind things sentient beings are doing in this life, Somewhere in the past life, they have saved your life. They have displayed courage and helped you escape and have given you what you needed to survive and grow. Now, this is the kindness of others, and this is what we need to hold on to and remember about each and every one of us. And we need to treat the, each and every sentient being with respect, kindness, and compassion that they deserve. This is how we grow in the Dharma and move towards becoming awakened for the benefit of all sentient beings. <laughs>